Hey, how are you doing? I'm good. I have a question. How do I learn JavaScript? Ah, to learn JavaScript, first you need to know what JavaScript syntax is. And what is JavaScript syntax? It's basically a set of rules that defines how JavaScript programs should look like. Let's get into it. Before we dive into JavaScript syntax, have index.html open in the browser along with the console and link devdelight.js because that's where we're going to be doing all our coding. So let's start with code comments. A comment is a text that programmers use to leave notes to themselves and other programmers reading the source code. The source code can get pretty complex, so it's good to have some kind of summary or description of what it's doing. Comments are ignored by interpreters and compilers. What that means is JavaScript will not do anything with this code. It's just for the developer to see. There are two ways to leave a comment. The first way is the single line that you see here. So you just do double slash and you can write anything you want. The second way to do it is a multi-line one. The way to do that is with the backslash asterisk. You can write whatever you want here. And then you can end it with the asterisk and the backslash again. So you can put whatever you want. You can put other asterisks to make it more aesthetic. And that's how you create comments in JavaScript. Let's just get rid of that for now. Now let's talk about expressions. A fragment of code that produces a value is called an expression. For example, this is an expression. Two times three, this is also an expression. Now, expressions are just fragments of code and by themselves, they don't really do anything. When you combine expressions and make them perform a task, they become a statement. So for example, console.log two times three, that's a statement. A JavaScript program is basically a sequence of statements. Let's print this out. Six. Now let's talk about variables program needs to remember things and a way to hold values that can be accessed or modified later. So that's where variables come in. To declare a variable, you use the keyword var, and that's our variable declaration. Variables are basically a placeholder to store information. Also, the semicolon you see right here is a way to let JavaScript know that the statement has been done. It's a way to end statements. It's optional, but a good coding style to have. Let's go into assignments. So let's actually comment this out. So to assign a value to a variable, you use an equal sign. Now we print this out. Refresh the browser. You see two sixes because one is coming from the statement, console.log, and the other one from assignment. So, in fact, like you know, let's comment that line out. Save and let's refresh again. As you can see, we assigned number six to variable A and printed it out. Now this assignment is not permanent and we can modify that value. The way to do that is by using equal sign and accessing the variable and adding something to it. For example, this will produce seven. 
we need to print it out again. So as you can see, originally we assigned 6 to A, printed it out, 6, then we added 1, and it became 7. So we can subtract, multiply, divide, and do normal math operations to these variables. There's two ways to assign a variable. Let's comment this out really quick. So the first way you saw is var a equals 6. But another way you can do it, you can just do var a. At this point, a is undefined. If you print this out and refresh, undefined. However, we can also assign something to it after we created the variable a. So for example, 14, and if we refresh, boom, there you have it. So let's comment this out as well. Let's talk about compound operators. Okay, so as we've seen before, we can we can modify the variable by adding a number to itself. So let's set three. And if we print that out, forget to console log. It'll be eighteen. But with compound assignment operators, there's actually a shortcut to do the same line. So let's come on this out. What you do is you first write the operation that you want to do, for example, plus, then you do equal and the number. So it's sort of a shortcut. And if you print it out right now, refresh 18, you can do the same thing with, um, division, subtraction, multiplication. So for example, you could do result so that we'll multiply by three, divide by three, and subtract by three. Okay. And last thing I want to talk about, last but not least, is increment and decrement operators. There's a prefix and postfix way to do it. So increment and decrement operators are pretty much shortcuts to add or subtract one from the value. Let me demonstrate. Let's say we have result one. Now what we can do is subtract one by doing this we can also subtract one by using compound assignment operator or there is also a shortcut and increment operator you can do it this way also you can do it this way let's print both of them out actually So right now our result is one, we add one to it, so it would be two, and then we add another one to it, so it would be three. Let's refresh, yep, two and three. You can also do the same thing with, uh, you, can do, you can also do the same thing with subtraction. So if you refresh, so one minus one will be zero, minus one minus one. So it should show zero and minus one. So the question that might come up in your head right now is, so what's the difference between having minus minus here and minus minus in front of it? So the difference, and it's called actually prefix when you have it in the front and postfix when you have it after the variable. So let me show you some examples to explain the difference. So with prefix, 
what happens here is a is equal to zero. And first the increment happens by one. So a becomes one. And then only after that, a gets assigned to b. So a and b are both one. In the postfix notation, however, c, which is zero here, gets assigned to d first. So d is zero. And then c gets incremented by one and c becomes one. So let's refresh the browser. And as you can see, A first gets incremented. It's one, one here. Then it gets assigned to B, one, one here. In postfix, first gets the D gets the C, which is zero. And then it gets incremented to one. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this JavaScript video and learned something new. If you did, please hit like and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys soon.